Welcome folks. Today's installment of this uh, series I've been doing on the HCI distributor is going to focus today on uh, how to properly uh, install it, the 4-pin ignition control module. Um, a lot of people they just go ahead and they use something like uh, dielectric grease to transfer the heat from the back of the ignition control module onto this pad here which I've cleaned up. Explained how I did that in a couple minutes here. But never use dielectric grease to mount your module to any distributor. Uh, the newer ones that are computer controlled, it's the same thing. You've, you've got, the, that's it, the uh, HEI um, ignition control module. If it mounts to any surface where heat has to be uh, transferred over and dissipated, some of them have an external uh, heat sink with fins on it. Some of them have, uh, some of the, even some of the, the V6 uh, distributors, the newer ones, say mid-90s. They all have to have a proper way to transfer the heat from the ignition control module or what happens is it usually overheat over time. The internal circuitry just kind of melts away and then it, that's it, you've got a, an engine that doesn't run, no spark. So uh, here's the proper stuff, it's the cheaper of, of the proper stuff that is. It's, um, it's a silicone cooler paste, uh, I picked it up a couple of years ago from a computer store that sold parts and accessories and things and there's a more expensive one than this this one's only about ten dollars give or take a few bucks but that'll last one guy probably a lifetime of installing uh, ignition control modules there's another one more expensive or oh, quite a bit more expensive I remember it being called arctic silver so just get the even the cheaper stuff this stuff it's probably similar to the stuff that you get sometimes when you buy an ignition control module come with a little um, tin foil pack of this heat sink grease so that's, that's the number one cause of an ignition control module overheating and frying itself. I've seen so many forms where, oh, my ignition control module, you know, it doesn't work anymore. Well, there's the reason why. It's not getting rid of the heat. Another reason that I can think of that you're having a problem with, uh, say, the ignition control module giving up the ghost not working anymore is a mismatch with the ignition coil. Okay, so if you're going to use a stock ignition control module, Pair it up with a stock, factory stock, uh, specified with the ohms and everything, uh, ignition coil. If you're going to talk about a high performance uh, ignition coil, spits out more high volts or what have you, then try and always get the matching ignition control module. Uh, the ignition control module is what's responsible for charging this coil up before it, uh, before it uh, creates the high voltage and sends it on to your spark plugs. So always remember that. Keep that in the back of your head at all times whenever you're messing with one of these. Stock module, stock ignition coil. That's a pair. you got a high performance uh, ignition coil. Like I say again, get the matching ignition control module. Otherwise, the, the very first thing, it could even fry the ignition, <coughs> the, uh, ignition coil as well because it will overcharge it. It can only be charged up for maybe 2 or 3 milliseconds, which is one thousandth of a second. You know, so you don't want to overcharge your coil. You don't want to undercharge it either, you get a weak spark, but at the very same time. If you're having trouble with the ignition control modules blowing on you, well there's there's another reason, is a mismatch between the ignition coil and the um, ignition control module. Uh, one thing I did notice with parts, I'll even put this in here. I discovered this, I put this replacement one in here. There's no branding on it. It was it was a, <clears throat> excuse me, a fairly well-known manufacturer of um, automotive parts. Um, but what I noticed on the back side, it's not flat in here. There's there's a bit of a recess in there. I'll kind of tilt it back and forth a little bit so you can see that rectangle right in here. And it, it goes down about a 30 second of an inch, not quite a millimeter deep. And the, what I'm seeing here is if there's anything that has to pull heat right from this part where the recess is, there's an electronics in there, that's just going to fill that, we're going to fill that cavity with the uh, heat transferring compound and in, in the way I'm thinking is not good. Not good at all. I would rather go with something flat like an original GM module. I'll flip it over so you can see the branding on it. Totally flat. That's what I'd, I would look for if I was ever going to have a, you know buy one. Um, I'd look for a totally flat metal surface underneath the thing. On the top there, um, it's black in color so I don't know if you can see there's a GM logo in the middle, General Motors. Remember my uh, old friend Malcolm, he worked for uh, an official uh, AC Delco parts department at a major dealership not too far from me years ago. 
he told me this 990 number is fairly common to see that in these uh, factory original uh, General Motors ignition control modules. So keep your eye out for that 990 number there and see uh, how many times you see it turn up with the four pin module like this. Okay, clean up. Before you install one with the, the proper uh, heat transferring paste, um, you want to clean up all the surfaces. You can see here, this, this is the mounting pad for the back side of the ignition control module here. It's aluminum. It's part of the housing for the HI distributor itself. You don't want this dirty. Uh, you don't want any bumps and lumps in it. You see any rust or even the old uh, thermal grease or whatever the last guy put on it. It's all gunky. You want to clean that up. Uh, I find that brake clean, like an aerosol spray can of brake clean works quite well. Um, whatever will get the greasy stuff off and then once you get it to the point where the greasiness is gone what I like to do is use a little bit of 400 grit wet dry sandpaper the same kind the automotives guys use in body work I find you go any finer it won't bite any courses and you get pretty deep scratches so that's my favorite for doing this kind of work here is uh, 400 wet dry sandpaper could be uh, silicon carbide too I'm not sure what that one is offhand. The labeling on the back is gone because I tore the sheet up into smaller bits. Okay, so get everything clean, including these uh, tapped screw thread holes in here. The two screws that go down into the module, they're actually the ground for the module itself. So you have to make sure that these eyelets here too are nice and clean. You notice that you can see a nice shiny brass there, right? Clean them up with a little needle file set that I have here or you can use sandpaper whatever same goes for the pins oh before I forget anytime you go near any electronics always ground yourself out on any any fairly sizable metal piece or part the human body can uh, can build up static charge any of you ever had a shock grabbing a doorknob over the ears or whatever that's what that is and you don't want to discharge charge any high voltage static electricity into any electronics especially with integrated chips ICs has been known to fry them so ground yourself out before you touch anything like that especially the pins on the end all right so that's got to be spotless clean I, I degreased it and then I sanded it down with the 400 grit sandpaper same goes for the back here degrease it all right and then uh, just a, a couple of rubs with that 400 grit cleaned it right down to where it's nice and flat and shiny Okay, that'll take care of the heat transferring once it's installed, but you got to remember too, screw holes, those eyelets, that's the ground. Um, these connectors, you got to make sure they're clean on both sides. Um, the other one, there were the three wires, the other connector goes up to the uh, distributor cap. They have to be clean, like in the previous video here, I showed you how green and goopy that was. So that's all, everything connection's got to be cleaned out. Right over here, there's a screw hole here. It mounts for that uh, capacitor that suppresses any radio noise that you get from high voltage, uh, you know, ignition triggering in, in the ignition system. So everything's got to kind of go together. Now, the best way for this type, this one has this little housing here where the wires run in and then the radio uh, noise suppression capacitor is attached right in there. Um, I find the only way you're going to get this ignition control module is to plug it in here first. I've already uh, coated it with some dielectric grease. Now that's what dielectric grease is, is mainly used for is electrical connections, not heat transfer. Okay, so we'll just slide that in there. Um, so to get the, what I'm going to do here is probably put the, uh, the, the heat sink grease or the thermal paste on the back here. And uh, I'll just put a dab on there and then I'll show you how I spread it around. All right, so just put a nice glob of it at one end. Uh, it's better to have a little bit more than you need rather than too little, because if you have an air pocket in there, that part is not going to be doing any heat transferring. So here, I put a glob on there. Okay, don't have the stillest hands in the on the planet, but we'll give it a try. Um, so you got that glob there. All you really want to do is spread it out evenly. Okay. So just spread it out nice and even. There's also two little protrusions of plastic, two little plastic knobs here, and there's two uh, matching holes that they have to go down in there to locate the uh, ignition control module. Like I say, never use dielectric grease for this application. You're just asking for trouble, right? So once you get that smeared on there nice and even, there we go. Then 
what I found too is uh, the housing and where the rotor um, attaches to on this bar that goes across the distributor shaft uh, you have to kind of time it to get the best results for putting this thing in because you have to kind of under duck it here so you just get it in there and you just kind of wiggle and jiggle and over here there's a, a locating notch that has to go in there now we'll just get that seated down sorry for the shakiness too much coffee more than likely it's probably why, is, why wasn't it never a brain surgeon <laughs> So just hold that down in there. Uh, before I bolt this down, what I like to do is to make sure my connections are there. You could screw it down first, but we can get this connector on here. It's a lot easier with the dielectric. Now what I like to do is I like to hold this down with my thumb. Here I'm going to angle this over a little bit so my hands don't get in the way so much. Alrighty then. Where are we centered? Not bad. Okay, just drop your two screws in there. These have to be clean under the heads. There's sometimes a lock, locking star type locking washer and the threads have to be clean. Everything has to be clean where these connections are. That's a, a problem with any electronics. Electricity is you got any oxidation, bad connection, that's the first thing that's going to cause you a headache. Okay, So I'm holding this, I'm pinching my thumb and forefinger together to hold this module down. They've located, the ignition control module has located those two plastic pins into the housing, the matching holes in the, in the distributor housing here. So give it a wiggle and a jiggle and hold it down. Take the screw first screw down just until it touches. What we want to do is we want to just gradually go back and forth. Okay, just make sure everything's pushed down where it should be. Okay, nothing's sticking up. And you can feel it won't turn because those two pins locating it. So all you do is you go back and forth a few times. Guess I better move this over a little bit more. There we go. So just just a little bit of a turn, a little bit of a turn, go back and forth. And you you got to remember the size of the screw threads that you're dealing with. A small one like this, if you start really wrenching on it, you're going to strip those threads and then it's going to be useless. So what you want to do is go back and forth evenly, right? When you feel that resistance build up, that's the time to stop, right? So there, I'm good there. Now there's only one screw remaining and it holds the uh, the radio noise suppression capacitor in place. Another thing I should mention is I do not like mechanical joints with any electrical connection. Okay, this is a prime example right here. Is um, you get oxidation, you get moisture in there, you've uh, you've lost your connection, right? Or high resistance. You don't want that. So that's with this alone. If I had problems with it, the first thing I'd do is probably clean all the parts and pieces, and then. Uh, and then put it back together and see if it worked because I'll bet you there's a lot going on with connections with this. I do not like mechanical connections. As a matter of fact on the newer vehicles that have computers in them you'll notice a lot of them on the mail plug they'll have um, a finned rubber or silicone like seal and the part it goes into will match tightly to that seal and when you put it together it makes it moist, moisture resistant. No moisture can really get in there providing it wasn't too damp and raining when you put the thing together to begin with. So there's basically how simple it is. Um, the thing that you always have to remember is never use um, dielectric grease or any grease unless it's made for uh, heat transfer. There's the stuff there. About ten bucks a tube and like I say one last one guy even if he's doing a lot of these it'll last them close to a lifetime because it doesn't take very much of this to uh, to coat one of these ignition modules, this one or the newer ones that they went to that are computer controlled. So that's the main two reasons, like I mentioned at, at first, is always match your ignition control module to your ignition coil. Don't say I'm just going to go ahead and upgrade my coil. Stuff it in there and then you find you, you've either got uh, a damaged ignition coil and or at the very same time a damaged ignition control module quite basic so if I was ever going to do a, an upgrade to uh, a higher energy thing the first thing I'd do is buy a matched pair like I said that way you avoid a lot of headaches the manufacturer the, the guys that came up with the uh, high performance stuff they uh, if they have a part that goes with it you can bet that they're going to get it right the first time all right so that's basically it um, yeah I might in the future I might even uh, 
sand it down to where I get the shiny and maybe put a blob of solder on there too because I always like this is the strap that goes around the radial suppression capacitor or condenser if you automotive speak um, that's the ground for the, the can, the outside can of that capacitor and all it has is three little dimples in it that kind of dent into the outer can outside diameter of that can of that uh, call it condenser if you like automotive speak uh, that's the only connection there is for the ground there is, is just metal against metal um, same thing with the connections with the four pins here uh, you can put shine up all the connections and put some dielectric grease on there that's that's what the um, dielectric grease is for it's for uh, electrical connections uh, if you're putting light bulbs in your tail lights or whatever in your vehicle or this stuff you it's a more or less must have if you're putting silicone type spark plug wires on your spark plugs because what happens if you don't the the silicone boot on that end of the spark plug that wire that you put on the spark plug will bond on there like crazy and you, you end up probably cutting it off okay so this is what it's meant for spark plug wires where it goes onto the spark plug and uh, wiring connectors that's about it like I say use the right stuff save yourself a headache probably probably being stranded somewhere and this is the stuff that's going to do it the right way okay so that's the video for today hope you enjoyed it hope it helps you out and until next time be safe take care and have yourself a good one